Hello and welcome to the Vibe with Zero and Five podcast. I'm Cam. And I'm Emily. And before we start off this episode, I just want to say I apologize if the audio is a little wacky. We've had some technical difficulties. Um, we've tried for literally 30 minutes to record this episode and Zoom just chooses not to work. I mean, we've started literally five Zoom meetings and it's really ridiculous. I mean, I'm paying $15 a month for this Zoom Pro whatever and it literally doesn't work. So I apologize in advance if the audio is a little bit messed up. Um, you can blame Zoom. It's not our fault, but you can blame Zoom for that one. Uh, mm-hmm. If you want, shoot them an email or contact them and tell them to fix their, fix their game because, fix their game epic because you're not doing well. Like, fix your program. Yeah. Anyways, a little side note, email. Let's get into the normal episode. Let's have a good episode. Alrighty, so we got to talk about the NCAA tournament. So we're covering the Sweet 16. We covered the other stuff in a previous episode. So for the South, we have SDSU beating Alabama and Creighton beating Princeton. So very interesting there. And for the East, we have FAU beating Tennessee. I cannot believe how far they have made it. Um, Kind of shocking. They're in the final four. It's wild, but we'll see what happens. And then Kansas State beat Michigan State. Um, A little bit sad because I wanted Michigan State to win, but that's okay. Kansas State has a good team, and yeah. Yeah, um, FAU winning is very unfortunate. I don't want them to win. And no one seeds are left, which is crazy. I think this is like the – soonest it's been that one seeds have been out moving on to the midwest miami beat houston so another one seed gone and texas beat xavier so you love to see that and then in the west yukon beat arkansas unfortunately and gonzaga beat ucla um they crushed them i'm pretty sure and then moving on to the elite eight so in the south sdsu beat creighton And in the East, FAU beat Kansas State, as we already mentioned. So FAU and SDSU are in the final four for the South and the East divisions. Mm -hmm. Moving into the Midwest, Miami beat Texas. My Mo Bamba. I mean, I liked Miami. They had a great team this year, so I'm an ACC representation. But I wanted Texas to make it to the final four, but sadly they did not. And then for the West, UConn beat Gonzaga and Boy, did they beat them. They won by like 25, 30 points. It was a wild game. And correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't one of our followers, Rebecca, have UConn in the Final Four? I think she commented that. I think so. I had them in my Final Four, too, which is crazy. I think she might have. So, you know, if you had UConn in your Final Four, good for you because they've really been playing super well. So love to see that. All right, moving on to some Syracuse basketball news because orange basketball never stops. You know that on this podcast. So I already know, yeah. Will Gerard announced that he is entering the 2023 NBA draft. He is maintaining his college eligibility, however, and he has also announced that he is entering the transfer portal. So most likely if he does not stay in the NBA draft, he's going to end up transferring. He's heard from a bunch of different schools, so – be interesting to see where he goes if he decides to come back to college anyways uh best of luck to joe great four years with us um Mm -hmm. always been so nice to the fans and everything so really wish him the best some other syracuse basketball news benny williams announced that he is returning to syracuse for his junior season very great news um very happy to hear that um i know i've benny's been the trump of the week a few times and he he's made me mad a few times, but that's that's every Syracuse player literally ever. Like it just comes with being on the team. So I'm glad that Benny's back. Hopefully he has a great year for us. So it's a great um, announcement that Benny's coming back. Yes, and Benny is not only returning, but so is Chris Bell. So I'm personally really excited about that. Um, both Benny and Bell were a little bit. They had a few off games this year, and we were a little unsure about how we felt about them. But definitely towards the end of the year, we are big fans of both of them. And if they play like they did 
um, a few games and definitely towards the end of the season. I think the team's looking pretty promising for next year. So I'm really super happy that both of them have decided to return. And like that, now, they were both very young this yes. year. So like that they're growing. Like Benny didn't even really play his freshman year. So Beheim always said he was like another freshman. So like that, mm -hmm. hopefully we see a lot of growth from them this upcoming season. Definitely. I'm excited to see what they bring next year. And some exciting Syracuse news. We have finally hired another coach. So Syracuse hired former George Washington assistant coach Brendan Strong to fill the vacant assistant coach position we had. So that is good to see we hired someone. Um, I might have butchered his name, by the way. Not really sure how you say it, but can't wait to see how he is as a coach. And I mean, honestly, the team's looking pretty good for next year. So love to see that. Definitely. And then there's some portal news. So I know that Coach Rudd has really been looking into the portal to a few different players. Cam, do you want to talk more about that? Yeah, so we've looked into a few different players. Um, I'm not really too sure of names. Uh, there's been so many college guys that we've looked into. But I know, unfortunately, one of the guys we looked into, he was a 6'9 wing. He committed elsewhere, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, we need to fill a we need to fill our center position. I know that Jesse is still up in the air whether he's going to return or not. Um, we have Hema and William Patterson's coming in and uh, Peter Carey still, but I mean we need to fill our center position, especially if Jesse isn't coming back. And like that with Joe leaving, Peter leaving, Samir leaving, um, we need to get we need to get someone else in the portal. So we need to keep looking for guys. There's so, so many players in the court also. We need to mm -hmm. find somebody. So hopefully yeah. we can look in and find somebody to come here. I don't really care who it is as long as they're good. Right. Lots of good talent in the portal, like Cam said. All right. Now, moving on from basketball, we got to talk about MLB since the season finally started. So that's very exciting. So opening day was Thursday, March 30th, and the Yankees had a great first game. They beat the Giants 5-0, to zero. so very good game. Love to see that. Yep, I'm going to go over the stats for this game. So LeMay, the, the lineup was LeMahieu, Judge, Rizzo, Stanton, Donaldson, Torres, Cabrera, and Trevino, and Volpe. And then Esteban Floreal ended up pinch running for John Carlos Stanton. So let's go over the hitting. So LeMahieu was 1-4 for four with an RBI. Judge was two for four with a home run and two RBIs. He actually homered on his first at bat. Stan, uh, Rizzo was one for four. Stanton was one for four. Like I mentioned earlier, Florial pinch ran for Stanton. He didn't get any plate appearances, though. Donaldson was one for four. Torres was one for three with a homer, two RBIs, and a walk. Cabrera was unfortunately 0 for four. Trevino was one for three. And in his MLB debut, Anthony Volpe was 0 for two with a walk, and he stole a base at least one, so... Overall, he didn't get his first MLB hit. It'll be soon to come, but I'm glad to see that kid out there. He's mm -hmm. a star. Yeah. On the pitching side, Cole was our Garrett Cole was our opening day starter. He pitched very well. He pitched six innings, allowed three hits, no earned run, and 11 strikeouts. Out of the bullpen, we had Wandy Peralta, Jonathan Luizaga, and Ron Marinaccio pitch. So Peralta pitched two-thirds of an inning. He gave up one hit and struck out two batters. And then Loisaga pitched one third of an inning and didn't give up any hits or earned runs. So you love to see that. And then closing it out, Marinaccio pitched two innings, no hits, and had three strikeouts. So overall, our pitching was very well, did very well. The mm -hmm. uh, pitcher was Garrett Cole, and the losing pitcher was Gar uh, Logan Webb. So Yankees win 5 0. You love to see that. Couldn't start opening day off any better, really. Now we're going to do a little segment that we've been wanting to do for a while, but we're saving it for baseball season, and baseball season's finally here. So Yay. this is our all-time Chiefs, or Mets, or Sky Chiefs, if you will, um, team. So what we did is we just picked players that we thought would be cool to have on a team together. Like, I picked some of my favorite players. A couple of memes are in there. So I'm going to yeah. tell my team first. So... We're going to go in order. So my pitcher is Steven Strasburg. Catcher, we got Puppy, Jonathan Solano. Chris Marrero at first base. Dilly Dilly, Dilson Herrera at second. 
We got an OG, uh, Pedro Lopez at third, Emmanuel Burris at shortstop. And left field, we got Yuri Perez, great walk-up song, best walk-up song literally of all time. And center okay. field, Bryce Harper out there. And then for the memes, no glove in right field. He's going to catch a ball barehanded. We got Timothy Tebow. I had to put him out there for the memes. Emo, let's get into your right. team. I see some obnoxious names on your list. Uh-huh. Yeah, so for pitcher, we have Archimedes Caminero. Um, really just the fight that he had and then ended up going to Japan was just iconic, a very entertaining moment in Syracuse baseball history. So I had to put him. There's a couple other close ones I thought of, but I had to go with Archimedes. For catcher, we have Rene Rivera. I always liked him. He's a pretty cool guy. Um, he's always really nice. So I had to put RVR there. <laughs> For first baseman, I have Irving Palu. Not going to lie, I kind of forgot about him, but I was looking up people to do the segment, and I just saw him, and I'm like, I remember we really liked his name. We'd call him Irving Faluhu and stuff, so I had to put him there. Second baseman, we got Robinson Cano. So he was only on the Mets for a short time, Syracuse Mets, but he, um, we've always liked him, you know, other than him always going back to drugs, which kind of screws his career, but... He's a great player, and I give him a lot of respect because when he was in Syracuse, he went down the line and signed for literally everyone, which is rare, and especially for an actual good major league player. Third baseman, we got Danny Espinosa. So he was a chief and a Met. So Danny spent a lot of time in Syracuse. Like that, we always like to call him Danny and whatnot. So. And then we have Zach Walters on shortstop. This is going back to, like, what, 2014? Way back. We just always liked him. He's always a nice guy. So, yeah. We got, <laughs> for the outfield, the Brett Carroll. Now, if you don't know Brett Carroll, look at Cam. Yep, that's exactly how he'd smile. He'd be like, he'd smile like that. And it was just so funny. So, had to, had to mention him. For center field, we have Corey Brown. I loved Corey Brown. Walk of Song was good. It's, I'm different yet. I'm different. Um, we'll talk about him a little bit more later, but Corey Brown definitely made the cut. And then for right field, we had Rajay Davis. He was on the Syracuse Mets in 2019. He was always a cool fella, so had to mention him. Let us know in the comments who you think would win. Uh, this team, these teams against each other. I know my team's a little bit scared because Archimedes is on the mound. We don't know if a fight's going to break out. But who do you guys think would be my team or Emal's team? Definitely. I mean, we got we got yeah. some good guys in Strasburg and Harper. So. Oh, well, they'll definitely be close. Mm-hmm. So let us know what you think in the comments. We're gonna do uh, another segment that we've done before. Um, guess the player this week we're going to be doing MLB players since the MLB season is kicked off and that's basically all this episode is about so I'm going to go first and then Emal and then me again and then Emal so we each have two players Emal are you ready for the first player yeah all right here are the clues this player has played a lot of different positions but he is now a center fielder he is from the Bahamas and is allowed to represent the Bahamas and Great Britain in international competitions. This player has a cool ice cream glove. He's on the Marlins, and he is the cover of MLB The Show 23. All right, last two clues are very helpful. Is it Jazz Chisholm? It is, in fact, Jazz Chisholm. That is correct. All right, now for your player. Yeah, now for your player. Let's see. All right, this one should be pretty easy. So he's a current player on the Phillies. He's known for his beard, former Syracuse chief. He's good buddies with the Philly fanatic, and he is the PC of CNY Graphs there on Instagram. Is it Bryce Harper? That is correct. The uh, the former Syracuse chief clue really gave it away. It could have been, oh, yeah. been Trey Turner, though, but Trey Turner doesn't have a beard. That's true. All right, next player. This player used to play third base, but is now a first baseman. He has cool dreads. He wears number 27. He is the son of a former MLB Hall of Famer and is named after his dad, and he is a current Blue Jay. 
Is it Vladdy? It is, in fact, Vladdy Guerrero Jr. I had to put my boy Vladdy on here. All right. Let's see. The next player. Perfect. Oh, no. I see you. I see you getting like you already. (laughs) Uh, No offense, but he looks a bit like an alcoholic to some. Um, Former Astros player, current Mets player, recently placed on the IL and originally drafted in 04 by the Detroit Tigers. Is this player Justin Verlander? It is, in fact, Verlander, yes. Yeah, Verlander the alcoholic. So that was MLB Guess the Player. Uh, let us know if you got these players right. I think the clues are pretty easy this week. I think yeah. we kind of gave each other some easier players. So let us know if you got them right. All right. For this segment, this is a little weekly prospect watch. So basically every week we're going to pick an MLB prospect and just cover a little bit of information for them. So this week is Anthony Volpe. He is a shortstop currently on the Yankees. Um, like we mentioned earlier, he made his MLB debut. Um, so congratulations to him. He made the MLB team. So you really love to see that. So let's get into in- some information about Mr. Volpe. So he bats and throws right-handed. He plays shortstop and he is the number five prospect in all of baseball. He's only 21 years old, which is crazy. And mm-hmm. his, he was drafted in 2019 round one pick 30. So a first-round pick, and he's really panning out. His last year's stats, so he played in double-A and triple-A. Um, he started the year in Somerset, and then by the end of the year, when Oswald Peraza was called up, he moved up to Scranton. So his stats last year in total, he had a 249 average, 35 doubles, 5 triples, 21 home runs, 65 RBIs, and he stole 50 bases wow. this year. So look out for this kid on the base paths. He's drawn major comparisons to Derek Jeter. So be on the lookout for this kid. I mean, 50 stolen bases is crazy. He's great with the leather in the field. Really look out for this kid, Anthony Volpe. Um, That's this week's prospect watch. Like we said, just a little segment we like to cover some prospects. Mm -hmm. We'll do it every week. So if you want to see a specific prospect, maybe Francisco Alvarez you want to see. Uh, let us know in the comments and we'll cover that prospect. So yeah, definitely. A, little, a little new segment that we're going to be doing every week. So just a quick overview of some prospects, give you guys some more information about them. So hopefully you guys like this segment. All right. So another kind of new segment, we have MILB, cool or fool. So we're going to take a few players that we think are very cool and we like. And ones that are fools, maybe we've had a bad experience with them. They come off as a little bit rude, but we'll get into this. Our first player is cool, and it is Ronnie Mauricio. So in my personal opinion, he is my favorite Mets prospect. So obviously he's on the Syracuse Mets this year. Out of the prospects that we have, he's my favorite. Um, when I met him multiple times, he was very cool, very nice guy, um, usually mm-hmm. signs. So... Overall, Ronnie, very cool. He has a good drip, um, good walk-up song, too. So, overall, Ronnie, cool dude, good player. Overall, you're cool. Yep. Iman, For the Monica, cool. Cool. Yeah. No surprise Francisco here. Francisco Alvarez. So, he, you know, is a very huge prospect. Um He's kind of weird. He hasn't really signed much for the fans, and he doesn't sign cards for some reason, which is just really odd. Um. I don't know. I think if he wants to, you know, really be a good prospect, he might have to step it up a little bit this year. I mean, see what he has. But right now he's a fool. Haven't had very good experiences with him so far. Would like to see that change. But but he has the best tattooed on his neck right here, which is very interesting. And also he's a catcher and he doesn't squat properly when he catches. He like sits down. Yeah. So yeah. overall, Francisco Alvarez, you're a fool. And you guys are probably going to notice a theme with the fools. We'll get into that in a second. The next cool person, Emal, you want to talk about our boy, Ron? Ronald Guzman. So he was on Stratton last year, and that's when we really started to like him. He also made it up to the Major League for a few games. He has been traded to the Sacramento River Cats. Um, so we wish him the best, but 
Guzman, he is so kind to the fans, always signs, takes pictures, whatever. Um, this is kind of weird, but he smells like really good. He wears like coconut cologne and it he smells so good. It's it's a little bit of a weird observation, but something I have noticed. And he is also really cool because he is a he can be a pitcher and what other um, position did he play? He plays first, or he plays the outfield sometimes. But yeah, he's yeah. he's been pitching a lot in spring training. So hopefully we see that mm-hmm. from him in AAA. Unfortunately, we won't see him this year because we don't play Sacramento. But I hope the best for Ron, and hopefully he can mm-hmm. pitch well and hit well and have a great year overall. And yep. the Sacramento River Cats literally always get our favorite players. They got Ron, they have Mandy Alvarez on their team, and they literally got Shelby Miller last year. So something's Sacramento River Cats, they are like they know what they're doing with cool people. Yeah, they get the cool people fast. The next fool is Brett Beatty. Um when we went to Binghamton, we went to a Binghamton game last year and it ended up getting rained out, but we saw Beatty and we asked him for a pitcher and he was like, yeah, I'll get you after the game. And he knew well enough that it was going to get rained out. And then he snuck out a different way and never got a picture with us. So after that, we thought he was quite rude for that because it literally takes five seconds to get a picture with someone. Yeah. So we haven't liked him since. Emo, I have anything to add about Mr. Beatty? Yeah, and that could have been like a one-time thing because we haven't really interacted with him too much, but like, there was no one else there. It would have taken two seconds to get a picture. So I don't know why he just didn't do it then, but made him a fool for doing that. So, yeah. All right, the next cool player is Scott Kingery. We saw him last year on Lehigh Valley. He's on the Iron Pigs again this year. Um, when we interacted with him, he was a very nice guy. Um, signed mm-hmm. for all three of us yos, as we like to call ourselves. He signed um, whenever we saw him. Um, very mm-hmm. nice guy. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Emil, anything to add about Mr. Kingery? Yeah, just nice player. We like the Phillies, so, yeah. Emil, the next fool. What Mets player is it next? <laughs> Jose Peraza. So, Jose is an interesting fella. He was on Scranton last year, and then he went to the Woo Sox. Um he really never really signed much. He always he's the type of guy. Oh, I'll get you tomorrow, whatever. If he doesn't get you tomorrow, just kind of weird like that. I think we ended up getting him like once or twice, but overall, he faced a lot of his cards last year. Um, yep, he got his cards he faced because he never signs yeah. autographs. Yeah, exactly. So he's just a fool. Like, just take a couple seconds and sign. He has a ton of cards and stuff, so. He's literally in every product, like, just sign a few cards. Like, it's not going to kill you. All right, the next cool, Ima, who is the next cool player? At Nick Dini. So, Nick Dini, he was a catcher last year for the Syracuse Mets. He was actually, I'd say, one of the nicest guys on the team. You know, he'd always sign, and he was just a really nice, humble guy. Cool pitcher. We just, we liked Nick. So, he made the cool category. Yep, this year he's on the Durham Bulls, so we'll see him um, later this month, actually, because they come into town soon. Um, but, yeah, Nick Dini, cool guy. Um, they need to work on his height on the rosters a little bit. They're giving him, they're giving him a couple inches, which is generous. Uh, roster people work on that because Nick Dini is not five foot eight. just to let you know. But, anyways, Nick Dini, you're really cool. The, yeah. fool, the next fool is Khalil Lee. Now, we've Man. covered the Khalil Lee case that has been going on. Um, if you're not aware, he was had a warrant out for his arrest for some charges. Um, overall, just a fool. I mean, you're literally a girlfriend beater. That's literally horrible. And somehow you're still an MLB player. Didn't get suspended or released or anything. He got DFA'd off the 40-man, but still, he's going to be on Syracuse this year, which is literally horrible. Mm-hmm. And I told him all this, and I've come to the conclusion that his first at bat in Syracuse, he's getting booed by none other than your boy Cam because what he did is horrible. Yeah. And I don't support that, and he deserves to be booed. So clearly, you're a fool, and you should not even be able to play baseball. Perfectly said. 
The next cool player is Ima, your boy. Lucius Fox. So he is on the Red Wings, and he was on the Red Wings last year. And he was just very cool. Um, loved his walk-up song. It was, what does the Fox say? I mean, we all remember that banger from like 10 years ago. Iconic song. Even my mom likes it. So, you know, it's good if Chrissy's bumping it. But he's just a really cool player. He's actually pretty good as well. Um, we definitely want to get a picture with him this year. Tried to last year, but it was rain and then everything else. So Lucius Fox is just an extremely cool guy. And yeah, can't wait to see him this year. And he signs good too. So you love to see that person that mm-hmm. signs good and is actually cool. So Lucius Fox, you're definitely cool. The next mm-hmm. fool is none other than Nick Meyer. <laughs> Bazooka oh, Joe. Well, let's talk about Bazooka Joe. Yeah. So I got a card of a blonde Mets player. And we were trying to say, who's like a blonde Mets player? We're like Nick Myers. So I was thinking about having him sign it. But he also, this is not the Binghamton game where Brett Beatty didn't take a picture. Him and Brett Beatty dipped and didn't sign for anyone. So didn't even get the Bazooka Joe card signed. And honestly, probably won't after his tomfoolery but he's just I don't know kind of seems like an arrogant guy doesn't really sign much and it's like no offense but you're not that good so I don't know why you just don't sign for some fans exactly you're in triple a for a reason and you have literally two cards you have a team usa card and a bowman certified like you're such a bum you don't even have a bowman base card like you're horrible and also his wife or girlfriend or whatever he's dating or is in a relationship with is quite the chump on social media as well. I know on a post that he posted, um, somebody commented and was like, why didn't you sign or something along the lines of that? And the lady was like, shut up. You literally got uh, Max Scherzer or who, it was either Scherzer or DeBom. You literally got Max Scherzer on yours. Like, I don't want to hear it. Like, it was really rude. Sign, like you're literally a bum. Like sign autographs is not difficult. Exactly. So, Nick Meyer, shave your mustache. It looks horrible. Um, he looks scary. Cool. Like, yeah. Let us know if you guys want us to do this segment again. Personally, it was really fun. Um, I had a good time picking out the people, and talking about them is just fun, especially when they're fools, like the Syracuse yeah. Mets team this year. So, let us know if you want us to continue this segment. Um, we could do it with literally any anybody, any team, any player, whatever. Let us know yeah. if – you guys like this segment because we've done a lot of new segments recently. So hopefully you guys are enjoying them. Wrapping up this episode, we're going to be doing our normal weekly segments. So first of all, we're going to be doing the chump of the week. So the chump of the week is Jason Smorl. So he is the general manager of the Syracuse Mets and literally horrible at his job. Um, Make autographing great again at Syracuse because it needs to be made great again. He's just Mm -hmm. such a chump, and before games, he gives a 20-minute spiel on BS that no one cares about, and he yells into the microphone, and it's literally horrible. So, Jason Smorl, you're a chump. Uh, You need to uh, get a new job because you're literally horrible (laughs) at doing the Syracuse Mets. Um, But it's a great day for baseball in Syracuse, (laughs) New York. It's the greatest show on earth. <laughs> it's the greatest show on earth. But you're this week's chump because it's baseball season and you're a loser. So get a life. That my take of the week this week is that the Rochester Red Wings will be the best Triple A team this season. Um, looking at the roster, they have quite a good, quite a few good players. Um. Their team is pretty sacked this year. So I really think that the Rochester Red Wings will be the best AAA team this season. And also, this is not on the script, but I'm just going to add it anyways. The Syracuse Mets will be the worst team in AAA baseball this year. That's why it is because they always suck. And we have an infection and we have an infatuation with players who have Dick in their name. We have Danny Mendick. And our manager's name is Dick Scott. So you see how what we have going over here in Syracuse. So mm-hmm. very lovely. Ema, let's get into your show and tell item this week. Back when Syracuse baseball was great. This has to be so old. Uh, this is like probably 10, 11 years old. But this is a um, 
hat from the one and only Corey Brown. This is a game worn hat, if you will. And he also signed it because little like 10 year old email, I told you we always liked Corey Brown and I'm different. Yeah, I'm different. Great walk. So he was just such a nice guy. And it was like the last game of the season. So I'm like, hey, Corey, can I have a hat, please? And he, he gives me this and he signs it. And it's just great. Like he's such a nice player. And really liked him and I know I have a picture with him in this hat and I was wearing like a border college shirt very on brand for young Emal but he's just a great player and this hat just brings back a lot of good memories of the OG Cersei Chief. Love to see that I miss the OG Chief days and before I outro this episode I just got a message from the one and only Kevin Yanks on Instagram and he (laughs) notified me that Khalil Lee is being allowed to play this season. He is not suspended or anything. This is breaking news to email. She doesn't even know. I literally just got this text. But Khalil Lee is not suspended. He is not released. He is not temporarily inactive. He is an active player on the Syracuse Mets. This is literally horrible. So if you guys are watching this, um, I think we should start something on social media because why not? Let's stir the pot up. Yeah. Um, let's, oh, it's, yeah. let's start a hashtag or something. Um, I'll, de- I'll decide what it is when I post this episode, like the, uh, Instagram cap at uh, Instagram and everything, but either spread, uh, we're going to do either like a hashtag or a comment on social media or something release Khalil. Mm-hmm. Lee. We're starting something, either a hashtag or will come on Syracuse Mets or something because this is not right. So mm-hmm. clearly like that, act- it just shows. Um, so it just shows the, what the Mets team supports and exactly. we don't believe in that. And like that Trevor Bauer, the same thing happened with him a few years ago. He was proven that it didn't even happen. And look what he, look where he is. He got released by the Dodgers and is now playing in Japan. Like, You see where his career is. Like, why isn't the same happening with Khalil Lee? It's just ridiculous. But that was some breaking news. Um, Thought I should Mm -hmm. share to Kevin Yanks for the uh, update. Other than that, that's pretty much it for this episode. Um, Make sure to like and subscribe. Comment as always. Follow us on social media. Like we always say, it's literally the same outro every time. Email anything else to add to this outro? Uh, not really, but like that, interact in the comments. I know we asked you guys a few questions, so we love to see what you guys have to say. So, yeah. And we're starting a hashtag on social media. Hashtag release Khalil Lee. Other than that, we're out. We'll see you guys next week. Peace out.